Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to draft a hem facing. A hem facing is just like a neck or armhole facing, except it's used at the bottom of your top or dress or pants or even your sleeves. And it's just a way to finish that raw edge. So this here is a hack of my Lou Box Dress 1, and this has a hem facing. So you can see this is the bottom of the dress, and it's finished with an extra piece of fabric that mirrors that shape at the hem, and then it's folded back and stitched down. So you wanna use a hem facing when you are sewing something that has a curved edge. So for example, my Lou Box Dress 1 pattern uses a hem facing because the pattern or the hem it is really curved all around. So it's shorter in the front and then curves around to the back. And when you're using a woven fabric, it can just be a little bit tricky to turn it back sometimes on those curved edges. And a hem facing is a really great way to easily finish that curved hem. You can even use a hem facing if you wanna do some sort of fun shaped treatment at the hem. So like if you want to do a scallop hem, like with little circle shapes, or you could even do little pointed shapes. It's a really great way to just get creative and do different kinds of shapes with your fabric. Let's get started. To draft your own hem facing, you're going to need your pattern, a ruler, a curved ruler. It's kind of optional, but really handy and some tracing paper and some sort of writing implement. I'm gonna use this red colored pencil so we can see it really well. So I am going to be using my Miri tank top pattern. So I got my green cutting mat over here so we can have a little more contrast between the pattern and the cutting mat. And I'm going to demonstrate on the front of the pattern. The technique is the same for the front or the back. So you wanna grab your pattern, put it down, and then get your tracing paper. And you just need a little bit of tracing paper and you put it over the bottom of your pattern. If you want, you could tape it in place or just put something heavy down to hold it in place. I'm just gonna tape this down right to the pattern and the cutting mat. Okay, and that's washi tape, so it'll come up really easily. So we just wanna draw an outline right around our hem. A facing is really just a mirror of the outside of your garment. Oops, so I'm just gonna draw right around the edge and then you get to decide how deep you want your hem facing to be. So you'll wanna remember that you will have a seam allowance down here at the bottom. You could use something as narrow as like a one quarter inch seam allowance. And then you can just come with your ruler and you wanna measure from that bottom of the hem up to the desired height plus the seam allowance. So if I want my hem facing to be two inches and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna mark two and a quarter inches. And I just wanna go all along the hem and mark two and a quarter inches up. And then over here at this edge, bring your curved ruler in and you can connect those lines. So you'll just wanna get it nice and smooth. It really doesn't have to be exact because um, it's gonna be on the inside. You just wanna make sure that this bottom part is exact. Now you also wanna make a note that this edge is going to be cut on the fold, just like our pattern. If your pattern piece is cut um, in two pieces on the straight of grain, then you would put in your straight of grain to match the grain on your pattern piece. If you want guidelines for when you're attaching the facing to the hem, you could put in a little notch here and then make that same notch in your pattern piece. We'll wanna label this front facing, front hem facing, and then you can just cut this out and you will cut one because you cut one front. Now let's quickly do our back pattern piece. So here's my back pattern piece. And this is a good example because we have our grain line going straight here. So this pattern piece is not cut on the fold. And what we'll do for this is just draw in a grain line for our hem pattern piece 
that matches our regular, our regular pattern piece. So just like before, we want to draw around the edge. Oops, I always do that. Draw up here. And then we want to make sure that this hem facing is the same height as our other one so that they go together nicely. So we're going to go and mark two and a quarter inches away from that bottom edge. And the back is a little bit more curved, so I'm going to mark a few more little dashes. So if you don't have this curved ruler, you can just freehand it in. That's totally fine. And then we want to label this. Let's see, we need a shorter grain line. We're going to label it back hem facing. And for this one, we're going to cut two because when we cut our back piece out, we have to cut two. So you just need to do the same thing for your facing that you do for the regular pattern piece. So in addition to showing you how to create a hem facing on a paper pattern, I thought it would be fun today to show you how to do it using Adobe Illustrator. So this is the process that I go through when I'm making my own patterns. So here I have my Lou Box Dress 1 pattern. This is the back and the front, and I've made the lines extra thick so you can see them. And this is the completed pattern, and here are the hem facings that are in the pattern. Um, and we're gonna be making these today. So to start off, I found that it works best to make the hem facing from the pattern without the seam allowance. So to get started, I'm gonna take these two pattern pieces and remove the seam allowance. And I'm gonna do that by going to Object Path, Offset Path, and then my seam allowance is 0.5 inches and I wanna reduce it. So I do negative 0.5 and hit OK. So when you do that, you get a second object. And for my back pattern piece, we're totally fine. I'm gonna be able to use this um, object as is, but on my front pattern piece, I cut this piece on the fold. So I actually did not want to remove the seam allowance right here. So I'm just going to select that line and move it. So I'll go transform, move, and I selected it using the direct selection tool. And what it has in here is just the last move that I made, but I'm going to tell it to do negative 0.5 and zero vertical. And then we can see that it moves that line just half an inch over and it's back where it started. Now let's zoom in here on the bottom. The pieces that I want to use to make my hem facing are this line right here, this curve, and this curve over here. So what I want to do, I'm going to use my direct selection tool and you can get that by hitting the A button or clicking over here. And I'm going to select this bottom line and copy and paste in front. So Command C and then Command F. And then I will do the same over here. Command C and Command F. And let's just make those pink so we can see them. So now we'll just start with one. I'm gonna take this one. I want my hem facing to be two inches when it's finished. So I'm gonna make this line twice that big. I'm gonna make it four inches. And then I hit this little button to make it rounded. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a shape that's bigger than my dress. So now that I have this shape, I go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke. And now we have an outline all around here and I'm going to intersect this new shape with my dress and that will give me my hem facing. So I'm gonna make a copy of this dress just in case. So I did copy, paste in front again. And it is important to do that paste in front to make sure that everything stays exactly where you want it to. So I wanna select both of those items. In my Pathfinder tablet, I'm gonna hit intersect. And then that will reduce those shapes to only the sections that were overlapping. 
So this pink section right here is the back hem facing without any seam allowance. So to add my seam allowance, I'm gonna to go to Object, and again to Offset Path, and this time I'm going to be doing a positive 0.5. So here are the two shapes, and let's look at the outlines of those. Maybe we'll make them blue and a little bit bigger. So here we have this interior blue line. I'll make it dashed. That's going to be the stitching line where we attach it. And then the solid line is the cut line. So let's go ahead and repeat that for our front. So I'll select that line right there. And we are going to do four inches. Remember that's double what you want the finish size to be because we cut off half of it. So with our line selected, we want to go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. So now we have a shape instead of a line. And you want to select your dress, again without the seam allowance, copy, paste in front, and then select your little shape and intersect those. So now we have our front hem facing without the seam allowance. So to add our seam allowance, we're going to go over to Object, Path, Offset Path, and we already have 0.5 inches in there, so I'll just hit OK. Now here, because we're placing this edge on the fold, I need to edit this and get rid of this excess. So all I'm going to do, let's zoom in. Here you can see these little white squares are the points in the line. And I can see that I have little white squares right on where I want the fold line to be. So I'm going to use my pen tool and remove these extra points. And now my shape is the size I want it. So let's make these match over here. This outer line is our cutting line and our dashed line is our stitching line. When you, I'm gonna group these together. This is our front, this is our back. So when you go to sew these, this is gonna be on the fold and what we're going to sew together is our side seam. So let's look in here. Okay, I wanna look just at the outlines. So I'm gonna to go to outline, which is also command Y. And this shows you exactly what the lines are without any stroke. So when I stitch it, I wanna make sure that my seam or my seam lines are really aligned. But if I just align this cut edge, it's not gonna align exactly. So I wanna do a little bit of a tweak to the cutting line to make sure that it's easier to line up when I'm sewing. So in this preview mode, I'm gonna move one of these down until this stitching line is really pretty perfectly aligned. And then I can make adjustments to the outer cutting line. So let's take this one and you can just add and subtract points and get these to line up. So let's edit this one. And this is a pretty subtle change, but it just makes it a little bit easier especially if you're going to be giving this pattern to somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience sewing. Um, this just makes it easier to line up, to line up the fabric and know that you're gonna have it really aligned for the stitch line. Because sometimes that cut edge is not always gonna align as nicely as the stitch line. Basically, we're truing our seams, to use the jargon. <laughs> so here are two pattern pieces, and let me put them back on top of our dress before we finalize it. Um, I should have done this before. <laughs> but you want to also copy your notches. So you can just copy and then paste in front and pull those down together. You'll have the same notch in your hem facing that you have in the hem of your dress. And that'll be a good indicator that um, you're getting everything lined up when you're sewing it. And the same for this one over here. You can just copy, paste in front, and then pull those all, all down. Um, you also want to make sure to bring in your grain lines. Just copy those in. This one's going to be on the fold. 
put that in there. You can put in the labels. And if we bring them over to our final pattern pieces, we can see that they look pretty similar to those. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the show notes. And if you've never sewn a hem facing before, I have a blog post about how to do it in my Lou Box Dress One Sew Along, and I'll link to that down below. If you want to support the channel and this free content, I invite you to visit my pattern shop or buy me a coffee. And if you haven't already, I would be so honored if you hit the little like button on this video and then hit the button to subscribe. Happy sewing.